In the fight against the virus, face masks have become an essential accessory. But there have been widespread claims, many of them false, about their effectiveness or even side effects. But an exclusive poll conducted for Euronews suggests that most people believe masks are an effective tool against COVID-19. The poll also highlights how Europeans expect further lockdown procedures in the future. Neil O'Reilly can tell us more. Across Europe, people are enjoying varying degrees of freedom as countries gradually emerge from coronavirus lockdown. It was an extreme response to an unprecedented emergency, and for many, it was tough going. So, with the threat of a second wave hanging over the continent, how do people feel about doing it all over again? In partnership with pollsters Redfield and Wilton Strategies, Euronews sampled attitudes in several European countries. Firstly, there is a grim expectation another lockdown is coming. The majority view in Germany, Italy, France and Spain is that a return to life indoors is likely, around the 40% mark in each country. And perhaps encouragingly for authorities, most people approve of the idea if the virus is to be defeated. 38% of Germans strongly approve, while most Italians, French and Spanish either approve or strongly approve. To mask or not to mask, that is the question facing societies still battling COVID-19. And it's a much less divisive issue in Europe than in the US, our survey found. Respondents in all four countries strongly supported wearing a face covering in public places, particularly in France and Spain, where 58% give the idea strong backing. In Germany and Italy, that figure falls to 46% and 48% respectively. Europeans also appear to have faith in the face mask as an effective tool against the virus. A belief shared by 61% of Germans, and that confidence rises above 70% in Italy, France and Spain. These findings will be of interest to governments across Europe, still in crisis management mode. But they're only part of the picture, and attitudes could change if the situation were to take a turn for the worse again. Neil O'Reilly, Euronews. Well, joining us for a little bit more is Dr. Simon Colster, Senior Lecturer in Evidence-Based Healthcare at the University of Portsmouth. Thank you very much for your time. Now, it seems surprising. The survey that we've conducted suggests that Europeans do have faith in masks. I was actually in the UK last week. And a couple of things I really noticed. First of all, on the tube, probably one third of the people in every carriage didn't have a mask on. Or lots of people had them on, but they wore them underneath their nose. Their nose was still exposed. And you sort of think, what's gone wrong in the messaging, which means people aren't wearing them properly? That clearly is not going to be effective, surely, wearing it underneath your nose. How should we be wearing them? OK, so I think there's been a level of confusion here because face masks can be used for two different reasons. One, to protect yourself. And secondly, is what's called source control, so to protect other people, so to protect drop to stop droplets coming from your mouth and spreading all over the place. So I think there was quite a lot of confusion right at the start, because if you want to wear a mask to protect yourself, you have to wear a regulated FFP2 mask. You have to have special training. And it's clear that the majority of the population won't be able to wear those. As a consequence, the recommendation was to wear a homemade mask or a less effective mask. And people rightly said, well, that won't protect me. What's the point of wearing it? But actually, the instruction that didn't really come across clearly is the reason why people are being asked to wear masks is not for that protection of yourself, but to try and protect others around you. Um, and I think that messaging got a little bit mixed up. Also, in some places, the governments are saying what you need to do is wear a face covering, not necessarily a face mask. How different are the strategies that you can use without sort of completely saying, well, this is now not going to be effective anymore? OK, so I have a little demonstration for you here. So um, I've got myself a bandana, which I'll get over my head. Um, and this has just a soft bit of fabric. So I thought initially that if I wore something like this to go out to the shops, you know, that might be an effective way of, pre of preventing me breathing over other people if I was asymptomatic. Now, have a watch what happens if I take a match and I'll light a match and try to blow it out. It blows out the match straight away um, very easily. Now, if you compare that to a face mask, so this is a regulated surgical mask. So I've put this on, make sure there's a good seal over the nose. 
Do the same test again. Have my match. Live TV. Hang on a second. Between yeah, a, a huge difference. I mean, what what reasons are there for people not to wear them? Because particularly, I know in the UK they've said, well, if you've got a good reason not to wear one, that's fine. In your mind, from a medical perspective, what would be a good reason to say, well, I don't have to wear one? Um, so I think um, it makes sense if you have some sort of, if you're a sort of small child, um, trying to get children to wear them, trying to get children to do many things can be quite challenging. Um, I think for some people with communication difficulties. However, more generally, I think the more people in the population that can wear some sort of effective face covering, as I said, bandanas don't really work ever so well. Um, if you can get a mask that has multiple layers, the one I was wearing had three different layers in it, and you saw how effective that was. The majority of people who are wearing these sorts of things to just prevent them breathing over others, um, I think the better. Now, it's an incremental thing. If you want to avoid getting coronavirus, the best thing to do is to stay away from crowded places and wash your hands lots. And so the masks are just an incremental thing, but the more people who wear them, the less likely we are to spread coronavirus around surfaces. And, and it will make a, a small, but I think a very important difference to preventing the spread of the disease. Yeah, it's not just countries. I mean, companies as well putting in procedures about masks at Euronews. We pretty much have to wear one all the time. Obviously not when I'm on set, but getting in the lift, going to the canteen all the time. How much of that is that going to be part of our daily life? How many months, dare I say years, would we anticipate these type of procedures, practices being in place that will just become normal? Yeah, I imagine there will be a level of this that will depend on the R number and the number of cases. And so we might see things going up and down um, to a certain extent. Um, I think once a suitable vaccine or some sort of suitable medical treatment comes in, um, we'll probably start seeing less of this. However, I imagine if you look at what's happened in Asian countries following SARS and MERS, you've seen face masks have become to be something that's more... Um, more expected, especially when people have colds. So I think we might find that although the use of face masks definitely increases or will increase until we've got over the coronavirus problem, we may f well find that moving forward, when you just have a cold, for instance, and you have to go out, it might be uh, more acceptable for people to wear masks and indeed expected for people to wear masks when they have colds um, moving forward. So I think it's probably something that we're going to see staying um, for, for probably a very long time. Simon, thank you very much. Absolutely fascinating demonstration for us as well, which really just sort of hammered home the point. Dr Simon Colstow, Senior Lecturer in Evidence-Based Healthcare at the University of Portsmouth. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much.